Hey there, home theater fans. My name is Todd Anderson with avnirvana.com. And over the next couple of minutes, we are going to put this product on the HDMI test bench. This is a wireless HD transmitter and receiver kit made by a company called Amabo. They sent this to me and asked me to review it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do now. There are a couple disappointing things about this kit, but there also are a few reasons why you may want to purchase it. So definitely stick around. Okay, so before we hop into the nitty gritty, I just wanna let you know about my methods. For this review, I tested this kit out with a variety of 4K and HD sources. That includes a cable box, 4K Blu-ray player, a Kaleidoscape player, along with displays that include a 4K TV and a 4K projector. I also used these high-tech devices from a company called Meridio. This is their 8K Fox and Hound. Think of this kind of as an HDMI x-ray machine that really lets us see what's going on on the inside. And they gave some really interesting results. All right, in terms of overall quality, fairly impressed with uh, the materials that Amiibo uses. Uh, you can see there's some nice looking plastic, some attention to detail. I particularly like the metal case that uh, is used on the receiver end. It reminds me of something that you might, might see from iFi Audio. Uh, so generally pretty nice. My one complaint actually has to do with the included HDMI cable. You can see right here, it's a flat cable that uh, measures about 10 and a half inches. And it looks like a nice cable. It measures at uh, 30 gigabits per second, 60 Hertz at eight bit color, which is more than enough for what this kit can actually achieve wirelessly. Speaking, uh, the one thing that I didn't like is that my tests show that it, it is not shielded internally, which means it could be susceptible to electromagnetic interference. If this is a kit that was going to be used in my home, this is a part that I would be replacing. Okay, and right up in the corner there, you can see our HDMI test bench checklist. This is a list made up of claims that Amiibo has on its Amazon webpage. So you, the consumer, go to the webpage, you see all of these selling points, and then you make a decision as to whether or not this is a product that is gonna meet your needs. And I'm here to tell you which of these are true and which are not true. So, Starting off, we have portable design and no messy wires. And in general, I don't have any problems with the portability of this particular product. Uh, you can see right here, this is the receiver unit. It has a flexible antenna. You know, this is something that you could probably stick on the wall. And because this would go behind a TV or on your desk behind a computer monitor or something like that, it would be fairly easy to hide this 40 inch long USB-C power cable. Also, they do have this flat HDMI cable, which, as I said, I think you should replace. Now, on the transmitter unit, I mean, this is where I'm kind of, uh, I don't really know if you can claim total portability and no mess. I mean, this particular aspect of it is portable. So this is the transmitter. It has a USB-C adapter. So when you plug it into a computer, this is all the mess that you have. Not that bad. But once you detach it and reveal this HDMI plug right here to plug in the back of a device like a cable box or a Blu-ray player, this is where we run into a few problems. Um, there is some width to this transmitter, uh, 2.5 inches to be exact. So if there are any plugs or connections on either side of the HDMI port and whatever you're plugging this into, you could run into some problems. Now there is a workaround for that. It's something like this. This is a dummy cable, uh, HDMI cable with a female end and a male end. So theoretically you could plug this into there and then not have that issue. But it's again, you're beginning to introduce some wires. Also, you may not be able to source enough power out of your HDMI connection to run this transmitter. I ran into that very problem by plugging this into an Xfinity cable box. In that case, you need to plug in this USB-C cable. Again, this is another 40 inch cable. And then you have some mess there. So portable design, no messy wires. I'm gonna give this a thumbs down. Okay, next up we have plug and play in five seconds. And 
I have to say, outside of the 10 minutes or so that it took me to figure out how to use this equipment once I got it out of the box, I did find that it is generally plug and play in about five seconds each time that I went to use it. So kudos to them. That is a claim that is in fact true. Okay, next up we have the biggest claim of them all that this is 4K capable. They say throughout the Amazon webpage that it supports 720p, 1080p, which is standard HD and 4K. It says you can enjoy the most realistic experience on a 4K compatible big screen and that the kit supports 4K 30 hertz and 4K 60 hertz. They also go on to say that the HDMI transmitter and receiver, and those are two uh, components that are important to keep grouped together. The transmitter and receiver allow for 4K video from USB Type-C and HDMI uh, devices. Now, I have to say, through extensive testing with real-world uh, sources and also my uh, Meridio 8K Fox and Hound kit, I was only able to coax 1080p 60 hertz with 8-bit color. That was it. That's the ceiling. I was never under any circumstance able to wirelessly transmit any kind of 4K resolutions. So I reached out to Amabo and said, hey, listen, I'm having some trouble with 4K here. And they got back to me. They said to get 4K, a phone, a tablet, or a laptop needs to connect directly to the receiver without the transmitter. But it's recommended to use the transmitter, which will make the signal more stable. So right there, that contradicts this notion that the HDMI transmitter and receiver allow for 4K video. Uh, so basically what they're saying is, is that this receiver right here can emit its own Wi-Fi hotspot, which it does. And I was able to connect to it with my iPhone, but under no circumstance was I able to transmit 4K from my iPhone to this receiver and have it display on the screen. It just wasn't possible. And uh, you know, I tried everything uh, that I could think of, including recording my own 4K HDR video. Everything was coming through on the other end at 1080p 60 with 8-bit color. So there's that. The other thing to note about uh, its transmissions capability, this is a kit that is uh, HDCP 1.4 compatible. Anytime you introduce HDCP 2.2, the uh, transmission dies. So something to keep in mind, I didn't run into any problems transmitting from an Xfinity cable box and a 4K Blu-ray player, uh, surprisingly, and both of those tested out as being HDCP 1.4. But if you have 2.2 equipment in your home, you're going to have some issues. Now, you're probably wondering, well, how do I know if I have HDCP 2.2 equipment in my home? If it's super new, uh, equipment. If it's a really brand new cable box, it probably is going to be 2.2, but you're not going to be entirely sure until you get this stuff into your house and test it out. Unfortunately, that's just the reality of the situation. But as far as it goes uh, to 4K transmission, I'm going to have to give this one a big no. Now, that brings us to smooth video. And you can see right there, there's a test pattern of a ball bouncing around and you can see there's just a little bit of a shimmy to that object. Uh, here's what it looks like uh, without wireless transmission. You can see it's super smooth. Now, how does that translate into real world content? Well, here you can take a look. You can see it, it looks pretty good. And I have to say to my eye, I didn't really notice that little bit of jitter in the image all that much. On a rare occasion, I saw it, and believe me, I have super picky eyes. I think the average user is not going to see it. So for smooth video, I'm going to give this one a pass with the caveat of if your eye is really picky, you might pick up on it. Okay, 5 gigahertz for a stable cast. Basically, they're saying that you're not going to see any dropouts or frozen pictures with this equipment, and I found that to be true. So... Uh, that's that's a category that gets a green check. Okay, next up we have transmission distance, and they are claiming 165 feet with straight line of sight. 
30 feet with any sort of obstruction like a wall. According to my testing, I was actually able to coax 250 up to 300 feet with straight line of sight, which is really good. And this kit is able to transmit from one room to another with a wall in the way. However, you are going to find, as I found, that your mileage is going to vary from some rooms in my home that were close by to where the receiver uh, was located. I didn't have any problems. And in others, I did have problems. So it really matters what's in the walls in your home. Uh, so this is something that you're going to need to get home and test out. But it's important to note that it can transmit through uh, some obstructions in your home. Okay, this next one is for anyone that's interested in using this uh, for gaming. I would say absolutely don't do it. Here is just an example of what the latency looks like, and you can see there's a decent delay there. So this is no good for gaming. I would not call this a low latency product. However, if you are purchasing this kit to display your computer screen up onto a large screen for presentations and things like that, and also for uh, viewing TV shows and movies, uh, latency is not an issue. And last up, we have a claim of wide compatibility with Linux, PC, and Mac devices. Unfortunately, our household is a Mac household, so I didn't have any uh, Linux or PC gear laying around to test with it, but I can tell you that I had zero issues with compatibility in terms of my iPhone and my MacBook Pro. So that claim gets my stamp of approval. Okay, now taking all those performance aspects under consideration, is this a kit that you should purchase? Uh, right now it's selling on Amazon for $129. You know, is it worth your hard earned money? And this is a twofold answer. Number one, if you're looking for 4K wireless transmission, or if you're a gamer and you want to hook up your console to your TV using this kit, I would say absolutely not. This is not a kit that you should be purchasing. However, if you're looking to mirror your phone or a computer screen up onto a big screen, and we're talking about, you know, at home, if you're sharing pictures off your phone, uh, or if you're at work and you want to share a presentation, this kit will be perfect for you. I think it's totally worth the $129. Also, I, you know, I think that I would purchase this kit uh, as a temporary uh, solution to wirelessly transmit an HD signal from a cable box or a Blu-ray player to something in your home. You know, maybe perhaps like say a screen that you've set up outside to uh, watch watch a movie or a sporting event with some friends. But I say temporary because it does lack in a couple performance aspects, particularly with you saw with the smooth video. Um, I don't think that I would use this as a full-time connection solution between a source and a TV in my home. In that case, I would stick with a traditional HDMI cable. But if you're okay with 1080p resolution, this, you know, like I said, temporary situations, I give this one a solid thumbs up. Just keep in mind, HDCP, 1.4 has to be in the signal chain. Once you bring 2.2 in, it's not going to work. Okay, folks, that is all I have for you today. If you're interested in purchasing this product after hearing all of this information, there is an affiliate link right down below. If you'd like to support our channel, uh, you can click on that link and it will take you over to the webpage for this kit and you can buy it there. Otherwise, thank you so much for hanging out with me today and look forward to seeing you soon.